the Indianapolis 500, the center of the racing world. This is race day at Indianapolis. At the end of the grueling grind for man and machine is victory. Danger for all, glory for one. This racetrack has been the scene of some of the most spectacular and some of the most glorious moments in the entire world of sport. For many of the drivers here, like Derek Daly, it's one tough month. On the eve of the first qualifying day, the Andretti Mears duel reached a standoff when Mario and then Rick posted identical laps of 221.456 miles per hour. When I see Rick and uh, Mario do their 220s, I gasp for a minute and think, you know, that's incredible. I didn't really expect him to do that. So now the exclusive group of 33 is complete. Derek Daly and the rest know only one will win. For anybody that wins it, it's a life-changing event. They would look back on that one day, and it would be the focal point of their life till the day they die. Has anybody ever uh, driven at 200 miles an hour intentionally between here and anywhere else? Just to give you an idea what that speed is, at 200 miles an hour, you'll actually cover the full length of a football field every single second. Do you think in the last 10 years, the speed of doing business got faster also? Of course it did. What do you think might happen in the next decade? probably going to get faster. Speed has two different elements, having the right people in the right positions, doing the right things, but an even more important element of speed might be removing the speed bumps that slow you down. We have Derek Daly, the famous announcer, calling the race for us. May the best man win. Paul, do you have any advice or otherwise for your man here? Pray for your life. <laughs> I stood down at the route racing pit when Paul Newman climbed aboard the Ford Mustang to drive that car to victory. David, with your background, you were a weatherman here in India. You should have known better. <laughs> There's a lot of things about which I should know better, but it just doesn't seem to work that way. Okay, thank you, David Letterman. When you announced we were going to do a movie about motor racing, you really sent a tidal wave of excitement all the way through open wheel racing. Of course, the television cameras arrived <laughs> because we're leading the race. And my mechanics and sponsors are back in our pits watching the monitor thinking, what is he doing? <laughs> the closer the corner gets, I'm thinking, did he tell me the truth? You're not really drunk, as long as you can still lie on the floor without holding on. So, if I talk a little funny, I am from this place called Dublin, Ireland. I'm probably a great example of somebody who got to live his dream. Speed of operations shouldn't scare people. Sometimes it makes you better, sometimes it makes you bitter. Preparation is a skill set fully understood by the great teams of people who end up in this magical place called Victory Circle. The magic to all of this is the greatest power we all possess is the power to choose. For those of you who have ever seen the Indy 500, there's this magical place called Victory Circle where only the winning teams get to go. And when I did my research in television, I realized that the number of teams who ever got to go there was so small. Why was it that the number was so small? What did those teams of people 
understand? What skill sets did they have? How did they execute? What was it that made that group of people so successful? But one of the occupational hazards of racing is something could go wrong. And for me, it went wrong in 1984, just over a year after I arrived to race Indy cars at these type of speeds. I actually lost control of my car at the Michigan International Speedway at 290 miles an hour. I made one spin, and the car went straight into the concrete wall. This is a picture here. And the yellow arrow that you see in the middle of that mess is my helmet, and I am buried in this destroyed shrapnel that used to be a racing car. Now, this accident completely changed my life because I had severe dislocations on my right foot, uh, right ankle, lost all the soft tissue on my right heel. I had a toe amputated in the accident on my left foot. I had a crushed left ankle, double compound fracture of the left leg, broken hip joint, broken pelvis, broken ribs, broken hand, broken arm, third degree burns, lacerated liver. Other than that, I think I was reasonably okay. <laughs> and if you have difficult days, do you think, could you consider difficulty to be your gift? 1990, 49 cars took the green in one of Sebring's most competitive races ever. The number 86 car, Bob Wallach, led early, followed by pole sitter Derek Daly in the number 84 Nissan. It was a Nissan 1-2 with Irishman Derek Daly getting his first win in the U.S. on St. Patrick's Day. So my challenge to everybody here, make it your personal mission to try and get that 2% number up. Because the great teams of people who end up in that place called Victory Circle, this is a skill set that they understand. They're actually encouraged. Their, ex their, their encouragement is accelerated to be creative and to be innovative. Has anybody here ever used a sports analogy, ever? Of course. People say, well, we hit a home run last year. Let's make sure we don't drop the ball on this one. Why do you use sports analogies? Because it puts people in the moment. I looked at my sport versus every stick and ball sport I know, and I compared the two to see what model we might look to. And do you know in the NFL, every 7.5 seconds they stop. They regroup. They have a discussion. They make another plan, and they do another seven and a half seconds worth. And do you know, on any given Sunday in the NFL, 50% of all the teams win. <laughs> what? Where I came from, there's only one team at the end of the day that wins. And it's usually the team who communicate well, who are aligned, who have a plan, who execute the plan to perfection. Thank you all so much. Thank you all. Enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you.